Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a really long time, so if you're still sticking with me, I really appreciate it. Uh, there's been so much going on that I'm gonna catch you guys up on kind of life and my current makeup journey because it's changed a little bit. Um, and we'll put some makeup on this face because I need to put some on before I go anywhere. Uh, so yeah, um, I can't even remember what the last thing it was I made a video about, so we're going to kind of dive in. Obviously, I don't do much research before I do these for y'all. Um, I, I want to say the last time I may have introduced this foundation, the Skin Silk from Revolution, I love this foundation. So if you haven't tried it yet, run, run, don't walk. It, this will be... I think the foundation of summer. I've already gone through this bottle. This bottle is empty. I had to buy a new one. That's how much I like it. And I don't repurchase foundations very often. Um, there's This is only the second foundation in probably five or six years that I have repurchased. The other one being the Yves Saint Laurent uh, After Hours, which was actually technically not even a repurchase because they reformulated and changed the name. Uh, so it used to be the Touche Clot, and then um, they rechanged it. They changed it to After Hours, and it's not the same, but it's still just as good. So technically not a repurchase. So this is literally the first foundation I have repurchased in probably six years. I am obsessed with this foundation. It's not really a foundation, and that might be what I like about it, because I'm currently going through like a no makeup makeup phase, and I've never been one of these people. Like I have talked about being a, oh, I'm a low, you know, low, what is it? Not low impact. Oh my God, why am I blinking on the word? Uh, anyway, I don't know. You know what I mean. Low maintenance, low maintenance. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of day. It's a Sunday, in case y'all didn't know. I, <laughs> um, I'm usually a low maintenance kind of gal. I like to say that I am. But I have been known to, you know, spend some time doing my makeup and not go places without makeup on my face. So... I, I don't know that I've ever really been a no makeup makeup kind of gal. I've just, I just, I pride myself in the fact that I can be ready in like 10 or 15 minutes really quickly, even with a full face. So I can go from nothing to everything in, you know, 10, 15 minutes max. So... But right now, and for like the last couple of months, I've just been in this phase where I still enjoy putting, like, putting this on right now. I like it. Look how pretty my skin looks. It just looks like my skin, but better. And I still enjoy that every day. And I'm not leaving the house every day without that on my face. But I kind of get to this point and I go, do I need to do anything else? Like, and maybe it's a bang thing because the bangs cover so much of my face that now I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Like I can be, I can be seen by the world. Um, so maybe that's like, that's like a, I don't know, a, a side effect of getting bangs. But um, it's been my reality for a couple of months, and part of that has a lot to do with. Um, two, at the end of April, I'm sorry, end of March, we're already in May. Holy crap. So at the end of March, I actually got sent out on a business trip. I was gone for two full weeks. So very soon after my last video, which I, yeah, that makes sense. That timeline tracks because I took this to Chicago with me. I ended up, um, going away on a business trip to Chicago, uh, to uh, do some work over there with my company. Anyway, I was gone for a full two weeks. And I had every intention of doing like a video when I was there of like my travel makeup and all this stuff. But I was there for work. I wasn't there for vacation. And 
I didn't have a ton of downtime. And when I did have downtime, I was exhausted, right? So um, I was kind of like, eh, taking it in stride. Uh, and I didn't really get around to filming. I also like didn't prep myself properly for filming. I just like, I didn't have any lighting. I didn't have any mirrors. I, it was, it was just like, oh, well, I'm not going to do it. Um, so fast forward, I, I then also, I transitioned straight from that project coming back and taking on a new role. So I got a promotion at work, which was really exciting. I'd been working towards it for a really long time and it went official April 1. So I literally, uh, boots on the ground on the 29th from a business trip and then April 1 was congrats new role here you go um so April was insane uh, you know it, I knew it was coming I knew the promotion was coming so it's not like I didn't know I was going to be jumping into a new role at that time the business trip was actually the thing that um was unexpected so I, I you know I had been prepared and I had to go away and then it was just a thing so anyway I'm long-winded um, I, I get back and it's just been kind of getting back into routine of things. You know, it's funny, you go away for two weeks and you think that's not a very long time, no big deal, but it just completely like ripped my life kind of inside out backwards and it, it just, all of my routines were gone in just those two weeks, so coming back, and and it's because also I didn't transition into my new role at work it, while keeping my routine. It was just all bam, brand new. So it's been a little. It it was just a lot in April in a in a really good way. I'm not not at all complaining. It was a great month, and I really enjoy. I'm really enjoying my new role, so uh, it's by no means a complaint. It was just an adjustment period. On top of that, I really wanted to get back into working out on a regular basis. So a few months ago, I stopped Pilates because financially it was so expensive, guys. And I'm like, you know, I I I make a decent living. I have a great job. I work for an awesome company. I love what I do. And I live in Texas, which is incredibly affordable. And things are just expensive. I think everybody's experiencing that. And one of the things that for me just got a little too much was affording a very expensive elite gym, like a Pilates gym. And I'm sure there are other ones out there. But the one I was going to was just so expensive. And I really liked it. See, that's the thing, is I really liked it. So I was like, well, I could find an alternative and do, and go to a different gym. And then I'm like, but if I don't like it, I won't go. So what's the point? So I tried to do some research and found, and I couldn't find a decent alternative that I really liked. And I just decided to kind of pull the plug on that for financial reasons alone. Um, and it did help. A hundred percent it helped because... I was, you know, it was up almost 200 bucks a month that I was spending just on that, which is nothing to sneeze at, you know, like for real. Um, so I pulled the plug and I used last month to kind of get back into it. I live in a great community. There's a great gym here. I love weightlifting. Um, so I decided to kind of jump back into it and, um, I've really been enjoying it, but I go, I realize something about me, and I don't know if you guys are this way too, that I love working out in the morning. No, let me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Nobody loves working out in the morning, at least, uh, yeah, no. But if I go in the morning before work, I will actually go and get a decent workout in versus if I wait until after work, I will just flake and skip it. And I find every thousand reasons to do it, and I don't do it. 
So I had to have a come to Jesus moment with myself and say self, point it at myself. Um, I did it in the mirror. It's easier that way. Um, but no, I, I really, I had to, I had to get real about it. Um, there's no sugar coating it and people are always trying to put a pretty spin on it or tell me, well, you have a really demanding job and you do, it doesn't matter. I have a lot of time. I'm a single woman with a nine to five career. Essentially, I can carve out 30 minutes to an hour a day for workout with no problem and no effect on my career and no effect on my family, like hanging out with my family and doing all the other things I want to do. That's just the reality. So it's not a time commitment. It's a me commitment. It's a get over, get over my own laziness and do it. Um, so yeah, so I had, a, um, I had to tell myself that's what it was and deal with it. And that's a funny thing, like if I sign up for classes at Pilates or at the ballet studio, if they're at seven o'clock at night, I'm going to go, even if I've been home for three hours. But it's because A, I paid, and B, like I love classes, but working out on my own, like I miss having a trainer because working out with a trainer is kind of like having a class and having somebody tell me what to do is just... It's just better. So, um, yeah, I had to do it. I had to switch my schedule around and do whatever. And that's kind of what I did in April. And now in May, I feel centered. But now I have a whole new problem. And the problem is, is I'm going on vacation in two weeks and two days. This is the problem, is I'm counting down. I'm going to Puerto Rico. I'll be in Puerto Rico for a week. And I'm so excited, um, but the countdown has begun. It's on my calendar at work. Everybody knows I'm going. Um, I've already like started making plans for how everything's gonna get covered. And I'm in vacay mode. Like I'm not like not doing work, but all I'm thinking about is the swimsuits I'm gonna pack and you know, how many sandals do I have to bring? And do I have to bring dresses and this and that? And and do I have enough sunscreen to get through a week? Well, I'm going to Puerto Rico. I could buy more. But I like the one here. All this stuff. This is all I'm thinking about. I think I want to pull my suitcase and start packing it. And I can't. It's two weeks away. That's silly. And yet, I'm on vacay mode. So, that's the other thing. So, couple this whole regroup of my life and new job, new everything, and then vacation at the end of the month, I've been in a really no makeup, makeup kind of way. So what you see that I just did, this is kind of, and I did extra today because I use my IT Cosmetics. This is the IT Cosmetics No Tug uh, Shadow Liner. Is that what it's called? No Tug Shadow Stick. Uh, I don't know what color this is because it probably says it in this very faint silver but it's like a goldy color it's really pretty highly recommend these these are fantastic i have like three or four shades they are awesome um and that's all i did on my lid with some eyeliner on my waterline top and bottom and that's kind of all i've been doing and then the mascara though guys the mascara this is that panorama mascara from l'oreal that i'm still completely obsessed with so again two things that I've purchased recently that I'm like okay and I'm so I'm slowly becoming okay it's a tangent because I can't finish the train of thought I'm really really becoming a mass cosmetics girl like I you know, I always used to like like my nice mix of some high end, some drugstore, some whatever. But here's the thing: we talked about this. Like everything's getting so expensive, right? Drugstore makeup, mass cosmetics are stepping up their game to meet the demands of. Well, probably they're trying to meet the demands of Gen Z, and really they're hitting all the millennials because we're like, oh, we have all the money to spend. 
And also, like, I don't want to spend it on a $70 anything anymore. Like, I, so I'm here for them, for all of the mass brands, stepping up their game, trying to catch the youngins. And I'm just going to reap all of the benefits because they're coming out they're coming back with things that were popular a while back and they're re, kind of redoing them. So colored mascara is coming back. I saw so many, I, I have so many in my cart on Ulta.com that I wanna try. I'm waiting, I need this panorama in a maroon. That is what I'm waiting for. Yves Saint Laurent made the most beautiful maroon mascara. Um, this was years ago at this point, probably six, seven years ago and uh, I'm guessing they discontinued it because I stopped seeing it in stores. And you see a lot of Violet. Um, Clinique had a version of their high, not their high impact, the other one. Um, but they had one that was also a maroon, not a purple, a maroon. L'Oreal makes a maroon and they're voluminous. I want it in this formula. L'Oreal, if you're listening, please. Maroon. And I don't love the voluminous L'Oreal. It's fine, but it gives me major raccoon eyes. And um, it also kind of makes my eyes itch. So let's not and say we didn't. But I'm dying for a maroon mascara because, oof, that used to be my thing. And that's what's happening is because everything old is new again. All the stuff that was so cool when I was in high school and college is that I still love. <laughs> is coming right back. I'm like, thank you, early 2000s, for coming back and being amazing again. Um, and I'm here for it. Lots of people are complaining about it, and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm here for it. Because now I understand myself and my style better than I did when I was that age, and I'm so excited to try all this stuff again. So one of the things that came back, that is coming back, are all these lip tints. Guys, so this is the Ulta Weightless Water um, Lip Stain. These used to be so popular in the like early to mid 2000s, and then you could only get them from like K Beauty brands. And it's this stain that literally, it's literally just a stain, like tons of pigment but no coverage. I call this, if you've seen, if you watched my videos for a while, you've seen, I have, I still have one from Tony Moly. And this is the stuff I call the popsicle lip. Um, it makes it look like you were eating a popsicle and it just stained your lips this color. And I'm obsessed. So I just saw Ulta launch these and I was like, well, sign me up. I got to go check. So this is Berry, Berry? I think so. It doesn't, of course, that the color isn't on here. It was very, very. Um, I picked this one because I have decided also that red is basically my signature lip color. I'm done trying um, browns and oranges as much as I like them, and I'll wear them every once in a while. But for every day, it's kind of like a red berry whatever. It's what I keep gravitating to and what I like when I see myself in a mirror with red lips. And I'm like, you know what? I'm owning it. I'm owning it. I'm just going to turn into a red lip girl. And that's the end of it. So you'll always see me in red lips and I'm fine with it. Um, so yeah, super excited. These are great. They don't dry your lip out. I wish... No, they, I wish they, they kind of smell like berry, but they don't taste like berry. They have a very, I, I have this complaint a lot of Ulta lip products. They take out all taste. And so they just end up tasting kind of chemically on your lip. Like, it's just a weird, it's like, it's weird. So I'm like, can you just flavor things? Um, and then when they do flavor them, they have this strange medicinal. So I don't love, so I guess this one I prefer because at least it doesn't taste like anything. Um, in, instead of that weird medicinal taste that you get sometimes with Ulta. Um, my last makeup hot take, not so hot take, I've alluded to this before. So I, you, y'all know, I have always been a fan of the setting spray. Um... 
But I've also said many a times, I don't think it does anything, right? I just like the feel of spraying my face when I'm done with my makeup. And I have now proof positive that they do absolutely nothing. Uh, because for the last, since I went banged, I got banged, it started becoming really annoying trying to spray my face down and not, because water cannot touch these bangs. They cannot get, they cannot get a bead of moisture on them or they will start to like kink up and curl and, and it's no, no ma'am, no. Um, so <laughs> I stopped doing the setting spray thing because I was noticing I would pull my bangs up and then I would get setting spray at like the root or something. And so the underside of my bang would get these little, you know, my curlies would curl up up in there and, and then they would like mat against my forehead and itch. And I, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It's fine. So, um, I stopped using the setting spray and my makeup stays exactly the same, exactly the same. Now, in all fairness, I do not have oily skin. I have very, very, very normal to dry in certain times of the year. There is no natural oils that come off of this face unless I'm sweating. Um, so I, you know, I setting my makeup is basically like a waste of product, um, in, on a normal day anyway. So would I still use it on like a special occasion? A hundred percent. Uh, do I kind of miss the feel of it? Yes. But I also prefer to keep my bangs looking the way they're supposed to, um, instead of spraying them. So Moral of the story is, is don't waste your money if you're like normal to dry. If you don't have oily skin and you don't really need a lot of setting, just don't waste your money. I now have a gazillion of these. My mom's probably going to inherit a couple when she comes to visit next week. So it's cool. It's fine. So that's it for me, y'all. That was um, a short, quick. I say that was short. It was. I've already been talking for 20 minutes. I can talk. Um, but I just wanted to catch you guys up, hopefully get back into the habit of doing some things. Hopefully you'll see some vacation posts. Um, one of my best friends is going with me, so I'm super excited. Um, and my mom, which I, I need to introduce her to y'all because she's great. <laughs> and, um, that's that. So hopefully you will see you. I'm crossing my fingers and I will do one more post because I have some ideas and I want some things I want to talk about uh, before vacation. And I, so hopefully I'll see you very soon in my next one. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Bye.